the Cowboys have begun minicamp. Uh, they will get on the practice field tomorrow. How about that? As the Cowboys get ready for practice. So we're talking about mm. practice. That also means that I'm getting close to probably needing to do my uh, rewatch of the season. A- isn't that something? Isn't that something? So here's how the NFL has gotten us, you know, throughout the course of, you know, time now. It's about to be the end of May. We're talking about practice, which means not a game, not a game. All right. We're talking about practice. But, you know, that means the month of June is right around the corner. And guess what? It might as well be training camp at that point because we only get a month and a half. And next, you know, hey, the boys could be heading out to, you know, Oxnard, California to get ready for training camp for 2023. And guess what, Reg? You know what that means? Football season. Football. Football season. The five most important Cowboys, though, heading into the 2023 NFL season. You're going to sense a theme here because these five gentlemen have either gotten paid or about to or about to get paid. Let's start at number five. He oh, falls okay. into the category of about to about to get paid. Would you like to take a guess? Is that CD? Uh, CD's no. going to be early or higher. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Is, this is an interesting way you do it because if you go one, it's a little easier to place it. Uh-huh. Uh, about to get paid because Mike is going to come earlier. Is it Trey? Trayvon Diggs comes okay. in at number five. By the way, if Aaron Gore's going to make threes, you might as well cancel Christmas. You might as well cancel Christmas if he's. Gonna Who told him it. he could do that? He's he's been doing it tonight. <laughs> Look at the numbers. Oh, okay. Exactly. Trayvon Diggs comes in at number five. Appreciate John Machado for this latest piece of content that we will go through here. The two-time Pro Bowler has become one of the NFL's top defensive backs, totaling 17 interceptions. That's number one in the National Football League and 49 passes defended in three seasons. Oh, yes, that is number one in the National Football League. Trayvon Diggs comes in at number five in the five, in the five most important Cowboys going into the 2023 season. Do you agree with that? Sure. Right. I mean, like, the defense is clearly... I don't want to say the tip of the spear again, but like it's clearly very important. They've put a lot of emphasis on making sure that the defense is strong. And we understand this is a passing league, man. You got to be able to cover some really good wide receivers, particularly in the NFC. Um, so with that being and the particularly case, in your own division. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So with that being the case, you need guys that are up to that challenge. Um, and I mean, look, man, you have an opportunity to do some really, really big. If you're a uh, Trayvon Diggs, because you look around the NFC while I've talked about the wide receivers, who are the quarterbacks? You know what I mean? Like, Hey, if you if you if someone wants to challenge you, you might have some fun this season. So no, he's he's going to be important, and obviously the tandem will be important. I'm interested to see if we get um, mm-hmm. if we get Stephon Gilmore on this top five. But I also wonder if it's just a lot of that weight of the the pair will then be slid to who is going to be uh, cornerback one in Trayvon Diggs. If nothing else, I am very interested to see how Trayvon Diggs develops his overall game as a corner now that. Stephon Gilmore is going to be in the same room as him, learning from a former NFL Defensive Player of the Year, understanding technique-wise what he has to do, ensuring that he's not cheating and looking in the backfield and getting caught on double moves. Hopefully some of that decreases this upcoming season. Not that the aggressiveness of Trayvon Diggs will go away, but some of the discipline will continue to emerge in his game by working with Stephon Gilmore. Number four, who is the number four most important player for the Cowboys coming into this upcoming season? This uh, is this going to be Tony Pollard? No, he'll come uh, a little later. He'll come soon. Okay, all right. Don't all overthink right. it. You had mentioned I was it like just a minute Lamb. ago. Yeah, but well, that's my thought. It's like I, there's there's a few guys, and I was like, I feel like Tony Pollard is going to be involved here, but I wouldn't have put him higher than CD. But I get why. I, it makes sense, and we'll get there. But CeeDee Lamb clearly is going to be important. I wonder how much of this is just like we know exactly what he's going to give us. It's not as much of a question mark, I guess, so to say. It's like, oh, yeah, no, he's really good. He's going to be important. He needs to be good, but he's going to be really good. We anticipate that. Sedarian so set career highs in receptions with 107, over 1,350 receiving yards, and nine touchdowns, turning himself into a bona fide Number one wide receiver. Mm. Did you hear what uh, Devontae Adams said the other day? I didn't. He put, uh, now his top five wide receiver group was kind of loose. Oh, I think I saw that. Because he actually had seven wide receivers. I get it. Including having himself as number one. That's right. Uh, but at number five, quote unquote, he had CeeDee Lamb as part of his top five of seven wide receivers. 
uh, in the National Football League. Look, man, it's tough putting the top seven together. Like, that's something that I always say when we start throwing out top five, top ten, like any of those is like actually start naming the names because it gets a lot more interesting, particularly when we talk about wide receivers in the NFL. And top seven is great company to be in. We consider like the amount of really, really good wide receivers in this league. Um, I always look at the wide receiver one. Obviously, like there's going to be a, you know, Mm -hmm. best wide receiver on a roster. But I kind of look at it like kind of like ace. You know, your ace in in baseball. Yeah. Where there's some guys that are, you know, your, your day one starters. But there, you know, there's a difference between being a day one starter and being an ace. <laughs> and he is the equivalent of an ace now. And so with that same thing, what I was saying earlier, the expectation of him is higher. But I also think that we we fully believe, by and large, I guess I can't speak for everybody, but um, I think we fully believe that he is going to not cap- not only capable, but will deliver more often than not pretty much all the time. You're looking at a 20 plus million dollar a year wide receiver in CD Lamb, his contract negotiations and when that gets done. Will tell us a lot about how the Cowboys feel about him and his future going forward. Number three. I thought this one, uh, mm-hmm. real quick before we mm-hmm. move forward, from the 214 on the truckwreck.com text line. Dak and CD one and two for me. And that's what I thought that that was going to be a little closer to what we got here. But we're going to slide to number three here. And I think this is where we get Tony Pollard. That's right. That's yeah. where we get Tony Pollard here. Of course, coming off of the injury suffered in the playoff game against the San Francisco 49ers. My man's on the franchise tag. And he is the number one back for the Dallas Cowboys and will have to carry the load. How much more he emerges in the passing game as well, I think will give us a lot of information about how the Cowboys will be willing to use him. Because I have said previously that Tony Pollard gives me Christian McCaffrey vibes. In fact, I've even gone even further than yes, that. You have. You've gone very far. Yes. And said that he is a better version at times. Those are Christian. words that you absolutely said, yes. And I stand ten toes on that because Tony Pollard is dynamic in both the passing and the run game when utilized as such. We need to see more of that. And I would love to see more of that this upcoming season. Absolutely. Sure. Fantastic. Uh, The thing is, we've had these hypothetical conversations about, hey, is he a bell cow or is he not a bell cow? It's like, no, he can actually do it. Y'all just don't think he can. He hasn't been given the opportunity. Well, now he has to. But you you don't have anybody on the roster that profiles as a bell cow. Even Ronald Jones, who is like a veteran, still is a little bit more of, Mm. you know, that movement kind of gadget guy. Obviously, uh, my guy, Deuce Vaughn, absolutely smaller. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he runs between the tackles, but still, he's not, you know, rookie running back. I don't know. I'm not at asking that size. him to carry the ball 25 times a game. I don't know that he's going to be able to do that Mm-mm. in that way, right? So it really is going to be Tony Power. We need you to, one, be capable of doing that, and two, do it consistently and well, right? It's not going to be like, well, you're getting a hang of it. So if you if you produce two yards of carry, it's fine. Oh, no, baby. We going to talk, right? Like, you, you need to be able to do and do well. So it's going to be very interesting to see that. And it almost makes me get to a point where I'm like, if he does not get added into the passing game, I might not be too upset if he's able to produce at that with that capability in running the football. Um, like a lot of people believe that he's capable of it, like the franchise tag that he was given kind of uh, requires of him. Normally on a list like this, the quarterback would be number one, but he's not in this particular case. Interesting. Rain Dakota Prescott comes in at number two. I thought that Dak would be one here. Not even just because of the quarterback, but because the narrative, the thing that became such a big deal, a big to-do, because I don't want to use the word narrative because that gets people stirred up. Um, and it's only, it's 930 at night. We don't really need to be stirred up. Y'all should be getting ready for bed <laughs> unless you're trucking. Don't worry. For, don't don't get ready for bed if you're trucking. Keep on trucking. But um, the, the prevailing conversation was the turnovers. And how is that going to look this season? That's going to be a big difference in in what's you know what the season is, right? Like if if you see the turnovers again, that is also going to very much validate the folks that go yeah no he is not it mm-hmm. right there is something wrong here if he is able to get back to what you anticipated for what he had been previously which is a a guy who is not turning the ball over who's safe with the football but then also capable of running the offense in the way that you want to being effective getting the yards that you need to facilitate in the football that's also very different because you know that the defense is strong and if the offense is capable of putting up the numbers that we've seen it do in the past consistently and also timely Oh, boy, this is a team that is Super Bowl caliber, right? Like, I don't know if anybody's going to get mad at me for saying that. But no. that's that's what it is. So I thought that this would be number one. But I I get it because I know where we're going next. Did you have thoughts on the Dak Prescott, too, as opposed to one? Well, the only thing I'll say is, is that for Dak Prescott, I thought last year was an, an anomaly when it comes to the turnovers that he had. I mean, the 15 interceptions that he had is uncharacteristic of him. But staying healthy and cutting down on the turnovers is paramount for him. 
in this office because they will only go as he takes them. But no, I have no qualms at number one because he is arguably the best defensive player in the NFL right now with all due respect to Nick Bosa, Aaron Donald, Micah Parsons. Yeah, even, is, if, even if he can't get off a fit with a basketball jersey. You know what you, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> even even then, still one of the best defensive players in the NFL. There is nothing that terrifies me more during the offseason than seeing NFL players trying to hoop. Trayvon and Stephon Diggs had their charity basketball game this weekend. Scared to death because Trayvon was out here, you know, trying to guard his brother, you know, Stephon. Uh, Micah Parr's out here playing a little bit of hoop, you know, with some NBA prospect, NBA draft prospects. My dog. All right. Just, just chill. Okay. More important things need to be happening this upcoming season. But no, I have no argument with Micah Parsons being number one on this list. I don't. Okay, so the thought process, let's let's walk through this, is your defense is very important. He is The defense basically goes as he goes. And he's the best player on your football team. Yes, okay. Um, so it's important that he shows up, right? I get that. Um, but also, in the same way as the CeeDee Lamb, where I think CeeDee Lamb ends up at four as opposed to a little bit higher up, um... I think that some of that is Michael Parsons, we can expect him to do that, right? Like the idea we had questions, or maybe I shouldn't say we, some folks have questions. Um, like, oh man, can he be an all the time defensive? Yes. yes. Yes, he can and be still be one of the best in the league. So like, I don't know what other questions remain for Michael Parsons, right? Like, can he, can he withstand the beating for the full 17? Is that the only question that remains? And he's putting on muscle to try to withstand it this upcoming season. Because, like, that's, like, if the idea is worst, worst case scenario, he's going to get, you know, two games where he's not all the way tip top. I still think that that's really, really good. Like, that's still meeting all the expectations. But he's still going to be important. I guess that's, so that's fair. He's going to be, you know, the most important guy on the team. I just feel like he is also one that you can check off right now because he is going to do what you expect of him. From the uh, 682, I'll answer this before we go to break real quick. So you think Tony Powell is a thousand yard rushing and thousand yard receiving type of back. Yeah, I do. I don't know that there's, I don't know if there's enough to eat in a, a thousand thousand for him. Well, the, the point is, is that there's capability there. Okay. And we have seen when he is utilized in the passing game, it's special. The biggest example that I think of from just this past season, you remember the Minnesota game? He caught a wheel route from Dak Prescott. Yes. Beautifully thrown football. Fun. And it was so much fun to watch. It's like, do that more. Please do that more. I would love to see that. Uh, but yeah, Tony Pollard is a special back when he is utilized correctly. Question is, will they do so?